the temperature was rising. He adopted aggressive attitude. His studs just went into the to, to the shin. The referee just took the safe bet. We were promised a higher threshold for fouls. We were promised more open and flowing matches with officials taking a back seat so the football could do the talking. But here we are, yet another Monday morning where referees are in the spotlight yet again as the record for most cards dished out in a single Premier League game week was absolutely smashed this weekend with 65 yellows and one red being brandished by the men in the middle. So thank God we are joined on episode four of The Whistleblower by former Premier League referee who is not scared of up upsetting supporters, players, referees, or the PGMOL. Mark Halsey just says it how it is, and that's exactly what fans have been crying out for. In this episode, we'll cover the chaos in the North London derby, Chelsea's Robert Sanchez escaping a red card in a record-breaking game at Bournemouth, plus double despair for Fulham, the dodgiest of VAR angles at Palace, plus red card controversies including Manchester United and Manchester City. Mark, great to have you back. So many possible starting points this week. Week, but I think you've got to start with that record-breaking weekend in the Premier League. 65 in total yellow cards. One red brings it up to 66. What's going on? We were promised that it was going to be a bit more relaxed and chilled out this season, that the threshold was going to be higher. It seems like refs are more officious than ever. <laughs> Let's make it 66, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Poor game management. <laughs> so what do you make of it then, Mark? What's going on? Re referees is all about... Um, you know, managing the players, managing the event, and it, it's it's setting those tolerance levels. And if we look at the game yesterday, the Arsenal the Arsenal Tottenham game, I mean, the it, it, the temperature was sky high. The seven yellow was cards sky. in the first half, there, Mark. Yeah, one seven, in the seven second, yellow eight cards. in total. But, but what's that see, about? As, as, as a referee at that level, and every game's a big game, whatever game you're refereeing, and you have to set your tolerance levels. And and yesterday, I thought Gerard um, set his tolerance levels a little bit low, too low for a game of that magnitude. But let's get into some of the incidents, Mark. The big North London derby turned out into a bit of a damp squib in the end, particularly if you're a Tottenham Hotspur fan, not so much if you're an Arsenal fan. Just 1-0 to the Gunners, uh, Gabriel. It was with that header in the second half. Couple of big incidents, though. First of all, I want to start with Christian Romero and the handball that wasn't right by the goal line in the first half. Firstly, what, what what does the law tell us about uh, handball in that situation and, and what did you make of it? Well, law, law 12 handling the ball has to be a deliberate act, a deliberate movement of the arm to the ball and making yourself unnaturally bigger. And that handball didn't meet the criteria. Absolutely, uh, Gerald Gillett was spot on not, not to give a handball. Fair enough, Mark. And the, the, the bigger one of that game, I think, Urien Timber escaped a red card for a challenge on Pedro Porro. And the, the, it was a strange coming together. It was high paced and Timber's ball, uh, foot was off the ground and almost above the ball. The, the, the stud sort of went onto the ball. Porro went down. Then, of course, it all booted off afterwards, which we'll, we'll get into. Uh, but just first of all, on the tackle or the challenge between Timber and Porro, Timber was given a yellow card after the, the melee. He, Tottenham fans, lots of Tottenham fans saying it should definitely be in a red because his foot went over the ball. How did you make of that one? No, listen, look, when we, when we look at Law 12, fouls and misconduct, um, you know, a, a careless challenge is a yellow card, OK? Uh, a reckless challenge is, is a free kick and, and a yellow card. And a challenge that endangers the player's safety with excessive force or brutality must be sanctioned with a red card. Now, listen, it's subjective, but for me, I thought they got it absolutely spot on. I, I, I thought it was a it was a reckless challenge, free kick and a yellow card. I, I didn't think it met the criteria of uh, serious foul play. VAR looks at looks at those challenges and uh, they stayed with the on-field position, which, which 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 was correct. I don't understand how it's a yellow then. If he if he gets the ball. And there, there it isn't deemed to be a serious offence. Yeah. How is it? I mean, how I was, is it uh, any card well, at all? As I said, it, it, it's subjective, and I think that the fact that he was on top of the ball and then his, his, his studs just went into the to, to the shin, I think that deemed it a, re a reckless challenge. So, yeah. listen, on another day, another referee may have just seen it as a careless. But I think I think because as well the. The, the, the temperature was rising. The game, the, you know, the, it was at boy, it was becoming the boy, boiling point. I think perhaps the referee just took the safe bet and issued a, a yellow card for yeah. 
for Reckless Challenge. He obviously all booted off straight afterwards. Vicario, the Tottenham goalkeeper, gets right up in Timber's face. But then it's Timber who grabs him by the shirt. Obviously, Timber was booked. You've got the challenge there. Was he... Vicario was booked for, for sort of being the aggressor, I guess. Um, but Timber, hardly a shy retiring wallflower after that. Do you think he was fortunate not to escape yeah. with a caution for that yeah. incident listen, as well? Listen, we, you know, He's been talking about we don't want to see too many yellow and red cards. And I thought Vicaro deserved his, his yellow card because he adopted aggressive attitude towards the opponent. Um, now, some may be you know, a bit, bit sinister and say, you know, Timber sort of perhaps should have got a second yellow card, but not not for me because he wasn't the aggressor. He was sort of putting his hands up to try and to, to, protect, him, to protect himself. So I thought, again, I thought they they, they handled that, that, that well. And if there was any other unseen instances that VL would have picked it up. I think uh, I've seen a few people protecting themselves like that on a uh, <laughs> on a Friday night uh, late on around here in, uh, oh, that's a little bit London. different to a Friday night out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, um, the, the Bournemouth-Chelsea game, we spoke about it, why it was a record-breaking game already. One of those yellow cards in question was given to Chelsea goalkeeper Robert Sanchez. His foul on Evan Nilsson, the Bournemouth striker. Wesley Fofana's dodgy back pass. Evan Nilsson nips it. In, chips it over Sanchez, bearing down a goal. Sanchez brings him down. A penalty was given, but only a yellow card was awarded. I'm assuming here you're going to talk to me about double jeopardy, but what I want to know is, can we be sure that Sanchez has made a 100% effort to play the ball there? Because I certainly wasn't convinced and, and perhaps there could be a case that, that he should have been sent off. Well, you can all... You can all also make a case for did the Chelsea um did the Chelsea forward uh, sorry the Bournemouth forward did he did he initiate the contact? Bah, he's, with, I mean, where Sanchez. else could he go though? He's chipped it over well, him. I know, but you know he's come out and he's, he's, he's put his leg out because obviously the ball's gone past him that way. So you you could argue he's made a genuine attempt to play the ball. Um and and for me I think that a, a caution was the correct course of action on that situation because if as you know if you make a genuine attempt to play the ball it, it's, it results in, in a yellow card if you don't make a genuine attempt to play the ball um, then obviously it's a penalty and and a red card fair enough right double despair for Fulham Mark uh, this was my game at the weekend I was at Craven Cottage Fulham were the better team throughout West Ham nicked it late on through Danny Ings the referee Tim Robinson VAR Paul Tierney, Marco Silva, the Fulham boss, was not happy after the game. I imagine uh, part, <laughs> a lot of that would have been the fact uh, Danny Ings' equaliser came so late and was so undeserved. But the main one he was talking about uh, was Adama Traore not given a penalty, not awarded a penalty. He was through on goal early in the game. Max Kilman, it was, chasing back. There was contact with Kilman. He made contact with Traore. He was obviously travelling at high speed. The most of the contact was with the arm. Minimal, hard to say if anything at all between the feet. But Marco Silva was fuming afterwards, said he does not understand how a penalty wasn't given. VAR had a look at it. What did you make of that one? So I was surprised because when it happened, uh, you texted me straight away because you're a West Ham fan and you're wanting a penalty for Fulham. <laughs> I mean, I had a very bad view from the away end, Mark, I must admit, but it looked like a penalty for me. Um, yeah, listen, look, it, it's one of those and it, it, it's it's subjective. Um, on another day, a penalty may have been given. Um, there's definitely contact, but when you are running at pace, the slightest of touch will make you go down. Mm. So, listen, you could argue, I mean, with, with Howard has said that they want to stay with the on-field decision. Was yeah. it a clear and obvious error from the, from the referee? It was subjective. I think that's why VAR didn't come involved. And when you got to look at as well, if, if the penalty was given, then you would also have to look at a red card because he hasn't made a genuine attempt to play the ball. No. So it's not only would have been a penalty, it would have been a red card. For, for Kilman because he hasn't made a genuine attempt to play the ball. Um, so, yeah, listen, on another day, it could have been given. It's one of those. And I think if had it been given, uh, West Ham couldn't have had any complaints. Yeah, I think if, if it had, you'd have, you'd have called it soft. But I think probably what we're talking about here, Mark, which we've been, we've been saying for a long while now, is good use of VAR from Paul Tierney and good in that they didn't use it. They haven't tried to re-referee the game there. They've left the decision no. with the on-field ref. And because it wasn't a clear and obvious error, that's why the decision was made. And, and, and that's what you want to see. And again, you use the word soft. There's nothing in the laws of the game about a soft foul or a soft penalty. 
it's either a foul or it's not a foul. And yeah, the referee subjective didn't see that as you as a always foul. tell me. You're always <laughs> talking to me about subjectivity, Mark. Crystal Palace, right? Uh, or, or, I've headlined this this item on on the running order: the dodgy VAR angle at Palace. <laughs> Crystal Palace two, Leicester two. Another brilliant game of football. Referee Tony Harrington, the on-field ref, Andy Madley, the VAR. Now. Uh, Jean-Philippe Mateta scores from a tyrant Mitchell Cross, given offside initially by the linesman. VR then checks and says it's onside and the goal is given. We can only assume from the angles shown in all the highlights packages and the official VAR angle that it was James Justin, the Leicester right back, playing Mateta onside. But Mark, it was totally unclear from the angles oh, yes. shown at the time and then afterwards in all the highlights <laughs> packages on the various <laughs> channels. Steve Cooper, the Leicester boss, was not happy after the game and said he's got some serious questions to ask of yeah. the PGMOL. What the hell's going on there? I, I, listen, I, I don't know. I think, I think, as we see in cricket, you know, they, you know on, on certain decisions, when there's a when there's a review, they stick with the umpire's decision. And I think, yeah, you know, it, it was. But the linesman gave the, it offside, didn't he? The, the assistant, um, he, yeah. gave, he gave it offside. So on that situation, it, it was unclear, wasn't it? Now, was 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 he behind the ball when the ball was played? Because if he's behind the ball when the ball's played, then he's not. He, obviously, he's not offside. Mm. Um, but it was it was unclear, and it's one of those. I think. I mean, obviously, Howard would be explaining to uh, to the to the Leicester manager on that instant because he he wasn't happy. And if it's that unclear, and you're not sure, then you've got to stick with the on field uh, assistance decision of of offside. But what what do you, what can you tell us about that situation at Palace? It appears it's something to do with the stadium. Well, obviously, you know you've got to have you've got to have the cameras in position. Mm. The camera. The cameras, if we've got VAR, we've got to have the cameras parallel with with the attacking with the with the attacking team. So, you know, if it means more cameras, we've got to get more cameras. But you've got to have that with, with an offside. You, the camera has to be parallel. And looking at this, the camera wasn't parallel with this incident, was it? No, definitely not. Right, Mark. Look, uh, we're, we're coming to the end now. But Brentford uh, gave City a bit of a hard game again, as they've done recently at the Etihad. Lost 2-1 eventually after going 1-0 up through Johan Wissa. Darren Bond, the ref here, VAR, Darren England. Uh, the one thing that caught my eye, I text you about this straight away, 42 minutes in, City were already 2-1 up by this stage. But Mateo Kovacic goes right through the back of, of Wissa, who scored Brentford's opener, as I've mentioned. He only got a yellow card. Wissa had to go off injured. Kovacic was then taken off at half-time for Rob. Audrey, I could not for the life of me understand how more wasn't being made of the fact that it was only a yellow and not a red. What did you think? Yeah, again, it's subjective. I mean, if we look at if we look at the two challenges, I think Jack Stevens was sent off at Southampton. Yep. Um, for that was a, a poor check, a, a very poor challenge. And you look at the height, you know, he's he's, he's caught him round his knee. So I, I, I think um, Stuart Atwell was 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 correct to send Jack Stevens off for for serious foul play. Adding spoken to um he's a, he's a full official Gavin Ward. I think it's Gavin Ward that informed him of the you know the the, the, the challenge. But yeah. I think it's subjective. I think uh, perhaps he, he was he was fortunate. I think the reason why is because he he was slow, but I don't think he could have any com complaints had um Darren Bond uh, showed a red card for serious foul play. And uh, he, he he was you could say he was fortunate. And I say VA are not going to get involved because they want to try and stay with the on field decision. I think that was that was subjective. Some would say he was fortunate. Some would say, well, yeah, it was a, it, it was a, like a yellow stroke orange card. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Well, you're, one you're, of those. You're <laughs> telling me about things that aren't in the law. I know that there's no orange <laughs> cards in the law, Mark. Look, Mark Halsey there, former Premier League referee and Sunsport columnist, joining us once again for episode four of Sunsport's Whistleblower. Mark, absolutely brilliant to have you with us. Another week of chaos in the Premier League as far as the officials were concerned. There were some brilliant games and some brilliant goals but we will be here every single week after every single Premier League game week this season with Mark to look at the good the bad and the ugly of all of the decisions made during the game weeks thank you so much to Mark for joining us again make sure you are subscribed to Sun Sport on YouTube to make sure you never miss an episode and also make sure you're following Sun Football on socials for all the individual clips thanks a lot we'll see you next week